Okay, so in this video, we are asking the question, does the integral of 3 plus cos of x over the square root of x squared plus 1 from 4 to infinity converge or diverge? We will, of course, as we have a rather difficult integration problem, tackle this issue with the idea of the comparison theorem. So we have here our function f of x. Again, the one condition was that the function was non-negative. Well, clearly the root of x squared plus 1 is positive, no problem here. What about 3 plus cosine of x? Well, if you look at your real line, recall that cos of x is always between negative 1 and 1. And if you add the cos of x 3, well, you're shifting everything by 3, and so you get the following picture. If you add the negative 1, 3, you get 2. 3 plus 1, 4. And so you see that 3 plus cosine of x is between 2 and 4. that's the first observation. So what we have is roughly a constant on the numerator, right? It oscillates but always between 2 and 4. And if you think about it, this would be the intuition. We're saying roughly speaking on our numerator, we have something that is roughly a constant. So we can think of it as just k over. And we can greatly simplify our denominator as well. If you think of it, when x is very large, well, 1 is insignificant. As x squared is much larger, we can ignore the 1, again looking at the intuition, and we're left with the root of x squared, and as x is positive, this is simply x. And so our function, when x is very big, is roughly a constant over x, and we know, as we have done before, that if you integrate 1 over x, or a constant over x, and a positive constant over x, from any number to positive infinity, the integral of this function over this interval should return also positive infinity. So right now, with our intuition, we should believe that this integral will actually diverge, and specifically by going up to positive infinity. So we want to go here in the opposite direction that we did in our previous video. We bounded f above in our previous video by a convergent integral. We now want to bound f below by a function that will give us a divergent integral. So let's see then. Our f of x, which is equal to, again, 3 plus cos of x, over the square root of x squared plus 1. Well, 3 plus cosine is always at least as big as 2. And we keep the same denominator. Now, the only problem here is this is still going to give us a rather unpleasant integral because of the root of x squared plus 1. But as we've said, this should be roughly when x is big, simply x. How can we, or can we drop this 1? That's the next question, because we want another inequality of this type. We want to obtain something even smaller than this expression. But if you drop the 1, you make x squared plus 1 become x squared, which is smaller than x squared plus 1 the root of that will also be smaller, but if you divide by something smaller, what you have will be bigger than this fraction. So you need to replace 1 by something that actually is bigger than 1. Well, if you think about it, our interval goes from 4 to infinity, and so x is at least 4. 
as x is at least 4, x squared is at least 16, which is clearly bigger than 1. So the idea here to give us a very simple integral is simply to replace the 1 by something much bigger, by x squared. And now let's double check that we have the right direction in our inequality. We are saying that this fraction is smaller than this fraction. Well, let's see. We have the same numerator, but we divide by the root of x squared plus x squared. And this is clearly bigger than x squared plus 1, as x squared is much bigger than 1. And so this is larger than this. But if you divide the same number by a larger expression, the result will be clearly smaller than the previous uh, fraction. And this now we can simplify quite nicely. This is 2 over the root of, well, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. And here you can simplify. If you split up these two terms, you have the root of 2 times the root of x squared. One step further, 2 over root of 2 is just root of 2. Root of x squared, as x is positive, is simply x. And now we have that f of x is bigger than root of 2 over x, which is what our intuition led us to believe. And this is now our g of x. So let's now ignore the integral of f from 4 to infinity in the favor of the much simpler function root of 2 over x, and we'll integrate this from 4 to infinity. g of x is the root 2 over x. And we, nav on, we have, sorry, on our hands, a rather simple integral. The integral of root 2 over x is simply root 2 times the ln of x in absolute value. Let's evaluate our antiderivative at both endpoints and subtract. We'll have root of 2 ln of t minus root of 2 ln of 4. This is a constant, and as t goes to infinity, so does ln of t. So this term goes to infinity. Infinity minus a constant is simply infinity. So the integral of g from 4 to infinity blows up, but if you think of it, f was bigger than g. So the integral of f is indeed bigger than the integral of g. And we'll have now our conclusion. And right, this function is bigger than this function, so clearly the integral of the bigger function will give us something bigger than the integral of the smaller function, but as we have just found, this improper integral is equal to positive infinity. And so now, the original integral is at least as big as infinity, so it must be infinite. And if something is infinite, of course, it doesn't exist. And so the improper integral diverges. And we're done.